Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jason Carter. I'm a state senator uh, here in Georgia, and I appreciate you inviting me to join your discussion on the Hope Scholarship and its future in our great state. Uh, I wish I could be there in person. Uh, as a Georgia grad, I always like coming to Athens, uh, and I apologize for not being able to make it, but I'm excited uh, that Andrew sent me some questions regarding the Hope Scholarship, and I hope that my answers to those questions are uh, a good part of your forum. Uh, the first question is what solvency challenges does the Hope Scholarship face in the coming years? And the, to be totally frank, um, the Hope Scholarship is an important aspect of what we're doing and it has been facing solvency challenges for some time. And it comes from two points of pressure. One is, as over time we have increased the number of students who are going to our uh, colleges and universities, and that's a great thing. All of us need to be committed as a state to increasing access to higher education. But as we have increased the number of students, there have been more and more HOPE scholarships. Um, in addition, and that puts pressure on the lottery fund, as you all know, I'm sure, the, the HOPE scholarship is funded by the Lottery for Education Fund. Now, the other solvency challenge, in addition to more people, is it's more expensive. Uh, and as the cost of tuition has gone up, when the HOPE scholarship uh, prior to, to two years ago was linked to tuition, um, every time tuition was going up, um, you would have an increase in, in the amount of money that it costs to run the HOPE scholarship program. So more people who each cost more leads to solvency problems. Now, as you, as you might expect, the next question I was given is, what is the Georgia legislature specifically doing to address these solvency challenges, and what am I personally doing? And I'll, I'll tell you the answer. Um, the legislature two years ago did two things, essentially. With respect to the HOPE scholarship itself, it stopped linking the scholarship to tuition increases. So as tuition increases, now the, that will not impact how much the HOPE scholarship pays out. Instead, we'll pay out what we can um, based upon what the amount of money in the lottery fund. Um, the, uh, the, the other piece of that puzzle is, is, sadly, as a result of those changes, there are, were for the first time last year, a reduction in the number of people going um, to Hot colleges and universities. So the, the major issue uh, that I have is that what we did not do and what I have done in the discussion about Hope Scholarship is say rather than cut the scholarship for everyone and reduce it and decouple it from tuition, we should consider uh, the need of the people who are going and applying um, for our state colleges and universities. And if we consider whether or not someone needs uh, the scholarship, and we can consider need in a variety of ways, um, then that is a better way, in my opinion, to spend our limited resources. Uh, that, that leads me to the third question, and I'll, I'll go into some more detail uh, now, but the third question I received uh, from Andrew is, what are the different plans for HOPE that the state legislature is looking at. And I outlined one plan before. The, the governor's plan from two years ago was to decouple, as they said, the scholarship from the um, tuition payments. So now it, 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 it pays, as you all know, less than tuition. So the amount of out-of-pocket expenses for students who qualify for HOPE, in other words, people who've done well academically in high school and have uh, uh, obtained the merit-based HOPE scholarship, um, they're not getting full tuition. That's one option. And as we move forward, if we continue along the line that we had before with increases in tuition and increases in the number of students, then we will, then hope will pay for less and less and less and ultimately will vanish over time because the amount of, the amount of student, number of students goes up, the tuition goes up, but the scholarship doesn't change or it goes down. Um, that's one plan. My plan says, and the one we've been discussing, and one of the other alternatives is, let's, let's look at it in a different way. We can't pay for everyone to go to college. We don't have the money in the HOPE scholarship. We've already, we've already recognized that. So how do we decide how to spend that money? To me, it's already a merit-based scholarship. We're only talking about people who've done really well in high school and who've qualified for the scholarship and been accepted to a university. So we should look at that group and say, who is it that needs the money the most? Um, and we can look at that, the number of brothers and sisters that people have who are going to school. There's a variety of ways to do it. But if 
what we want to do is to maximize the number of students who are able to afford to go to college, then the best way to do that is to consider need. So my proposal would be instead of a scholarship that ignores need and, and spends a huge amount of money, frankly, on people um, who would go to college anyway, um, then it, it makes sense to, to consider both merit and need rather than to ignore need altogether. Um, the next question that I received from Andrew is what is the attitude towards the scholarship in the state legislature? And I'll, I'll say this, there is a great amount of pride that everyone in the legislature takes with respect to the Hope Scholarship, and no one wants to, to be the person that eliminates it um, or that harms it. However, there has been a dramatic change in the way that people think about the Hope Scholarship when it was first uh, put forward. Uh, Zell Miller then was the governor and, and put it forward as this incredible opportunity for the middle class to ensure that they could break in uh, to the higher education realm and, and, and re receive the benefits as we all know where our economy is, is charging towards uh, a future that none of us are going to recognize perhaps with the changes that we've had in, in our global society and in technology, etc. And we know that we need more higher education as a society and we know how much it impacts an individual's success. And that idea that, that Zell Miller had of ensuring that access to education would be available to the middle class and to the, the, a growing number of people remains, in my p opinion, the center of the Hope Scholarship. And that, that access point, and th that it is an access point for college. Now, the other attitude says that the purpose of Hope is to keep the, quote, best and brightest in our state. And I, I think that is a noble goal. Um, but I don't think it is the key or the underpinning of the Hope Scholarship. For a long time, we were able to do both because the lottery revenues far exceeded the amount of money that it cost to, to pay for everyone. But now that we know we, our resources are limited, we have to decide what the Hope Scholarship means. And to me, it's about providing hope and access. And, and, and to me, it's about a statewide program as well. And those two things are not served necessarily um, by ensuring only that, that certain people who would be able to go to college anyway are able to go to college for free or for with, a, with, a, with, a, with a substantial stipend. No one's going for free anymore um, on the HOPE scholarship at least. Uh, next question and is what changes to HOPE are likely to be produced by the state legislature this session? Um, and and I'll, I'll say this. As I understand it, uh, people are unwilling to, to go back and revisit the changes that were made to the HOPE Scholarship. Now, there's another set of programs that have the HOPE label. The HOPE Grant for technical college students um, is a very successful program that is different from the scholarship. And, I, and we proposed at the beginning of this session a, a change in the eligibility requirements for those technical college grants. And I, I believe that the governor has agreed um, with our proposal um, to, to, to change the eligibility requirements for the grant to ensure that we'll maximize uh, or, or increase the number of people who are able to go to technical college. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, we have a reduction in the number of students going to our colleges and universities, but we had a massive reduction in the number of students going to technical colleges. And that's a, a problem for our economy. Um, it's a problem for developing and bringing people into the middle class and letting them have individual success as well. And so I'm glad that there's going to be a small change in the technical college uh, program, but I hope and I, I, I pray that we will in fact go back and continue to look at the problems that have been caused by the, um, the changes that were made to the HOPE Scholarship several years ago. Um, in closing, I'll just say this. This program and access to higher education is a crucial, crucial issue, both for our economy as a state, for our individual lives and the success that we want for our people, for you as students, and I hope that you will continue to, to pay attention to it, continue to discuss it, and continue to seek out answers. Again, I've, I've told you what I believe. I, I believe that we have to keep our eyes on the prize of, of, of access to education. Um, others would, would make other arguments, but I think that the people who have the most say and the people who should have the most say um, are, are the students who are looking out towards this future because, again, it's going to be yours um, that we charge forward into and, and, and some of the folks down here at the Capitol um, tend to look back or they tend to look at the present a lot more than that. So the best gift, I hope, that you can give to us is, is your thoughts and your ideas and I'm really glad y'all are having this forum and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.